All right, today we are going to try to fix another one of these drone gimbal boards. These are PCB boards that um, that the uh, gimbal camera attaches to. I think I've never actually seen one in flying around, but um, my understanding is that uh, these are commonly damaged if you have a crash with your drone and uh, one of the wires, the wires can come disconnected, which is pretty straightforward to put back together. But a lot of times the crash will actually rip components off the board. And that's how this one came to us. So let's see what we are looking at, because this one might be a bit of a challenge. So under the microscope, what we have are two spots of damage. Let's see if we can find them. Uh, one is this spot here, which this looks like some kind of an inductor coil came off of and it looks like it goes on here now one option would be to try to source this um, component but you'd have to know exactly what its values are and I don't know what those are and I tried to look around for a schematic and I couldn't find one very quickly so I think I'm going to take a stab at actually repairing it so an inductor coil is a pretty simple thing this is kind of like a housing, which probably is magnetic to help the inductor uh, actually boost, and the rest is just a coil of wire. So you know how I say it's never the coil? Well, this time it's the coil. This time it's definitely the coil. So we're going to try to fix that. And then our other job on this board is this connector. So this connector used to live here, and it was ripped off the board. So if you ever have um, some damage like this on any kind of small electronic circuit board. Don't try to, you know, if it's loose, don't don't rip it off. You know, because when you tear the pads off of the board, that actually really complicates the repair. So for us, one pad is still remaining, plus the anchor pads. And we have a bunch of pads that are missing. So our first question is, are those pads important? What did they connect to? And without the schematic, we're just going to have to try to read the board. So let's get some information on the bottom side of the connector itself that tore off. And you can see the pads are still attached to the bottom of the pins. And then this is the pad. And then the pad itself looks like was attached to pretty straight up just trace in the board. So that means that at one time it went like this. And each one of these pads then soldered to a trace that's torn off, which means that we should be able to kind of resurrect those spots. I'm just going to grab an X-Acto knife and try and scrape away at the solder mask and reveal the trace that was feeding the pad. All right, so not that one there. I don't know where that one goes. This pad looks like it was fed by this trace. So it, it could be sometimes traces or sometimes a pad is just not used or an NC not connected pad. But in the case of these, it looks like they were all connected. And we can tell that just from how the pads that are stuck to the connector look. The only problem is whether or not this is supposed to go here or not. So we should find one here as well. All right, so that's a pretty clear story for all of them. The only one that's sort of a question is right here. All right, that looks like it disappears down into the board there at that spot. So we'll leave that one alone. All right, so let's try to make this a short and sweet job. Now you might think, you know, why not just replace this board? And apparently the board is matched to the actual camera. So it's not as straightforward as just ordering another board, which is unfortunate because the camera apparently just totally 
snaps into all these connectors. So if you could source another board, that would be the way to go. But you can't. It was really funny though, I went out to try to find, you know, hey, can I find a schematic for this board or, you know, can I find some dead ones to use as a donor board? If I had a, you know, if someone gave me their dead one, then I could just um, figure out, you know, I could just harvest that component from the dead board. But I don't know anybody with a dead board of one of these, so I went online and then I just found a post that said, hey, I know this lady that can fix this stuff and it had a link back to me so I thought maybe this community would be interested to see how to fix another one of these all right so we're going to try to do the same thing and kind of clear the old pads off of the connector itself and they're just going to lift right off See how easy it is to come off with heat? So if you have a board that's kind of got a piece sort of quasi stuck on a little bit, just leave it on there until you can desolder it officially with heat. All right, so this one in theory is ready to go back on the new spot. With the right equipment, you'd really be surprised at what kind of a tiny scale you can work on. So I think this will be fine if in lieu of the pads, we just sort of nudge it up here and try to seat it on the rear connectors um, a little bit, a little bit further up. Oh, it looks like it's missing its anchor. All right, so in that case, we're gonna have to use some epoxy to hold the connector itself down to the board. And we'll do that last after we solder this on. All right, I'm going to make that one thinner. So it can sit on there. All right, something like that. All right, so we'll switch over to hot tweezers and we will just make these connections. All right, so that's all connected there. And then since it's missing its anchor pad, we're not really gonna be able to get it to make a good anchor and since we sort of cheated it up a little bit, but we can try to tag it a little bit and then we'll just come in here with some epoxy. <clears throat> all right, so with the epoxy, that should be electrically sound. So now let's address the bigger fish we have to fry on this board, where did it go? This guy. All right, so let's take off these pads because we're gonna use these pads again. Go back to the big iron. And the other side, I think we're gonna let it just maybe glue back to the existing structure there of the coil, the old coil. All right, so those are still attached to the board pretty well. Okay, now here's the challenge. We are going to attempt to tin that nub of the coil wire. And this, this is really a challenge. We're trying to actually repair a SMD component itself. All right, so that is ready now let's look at the little coil 
All right, so the side that actually fell off the board there, we're going to kind of put some epoxy on that to glue it back on. And then this side will be able to solder to one of the pads when we solder this on. And then we're going to have to solder this to the pad that is under the broken part. And then this is our sort of key point here is we have to make a joint there where that one broke off. So let's try and tin what we're going to need to solder. We do have to be careful not to bridge these coil wires together. It's never the coil. I'm fixing a coil right now. Can't believe it. It's never the coil unless you are talking about a gimbal board. Now, if anybody wants to send me some of these boards to use, if you have a dead board, you actually replaced it rather than sending it out for repair, then it would be super helpful to the next guy that sends me one to get me a donor board so that we can make a really robust repair. Right, let me hold that sort of down a little bit. I'm really having a lot of fun with sort of the we fix everything repairs. Especially locally when you start talking to people, you know, lots of people have little stuff to fix and lots of people make an assumption that you can't solder on this skill, but you sure can. So this needs to be tinned as well. All right, Flux will clean that up. Okay, let's give it a shot. So we'll come back and do our sort of epoxy work last after we get it electrically sound with some solder. Okay, so it's going to go like this. And we're just going to solder this wire here. All right, I'm going to hold that in place and try to see if we're lining that one up. All right, I think it can make a connection like that. We'll switch back to the big iron and see if we can just flow this back on here. Otherwise, we need to use hot air, which probably would be good in this case. All right, so that sits right down. Now we'll try to flow this other pad. Just putting some heat on there to flow that. And I will touch the iron to a little bit of solder. All right, that's on there. Now this coil wire needs to attach to one pad or the other. So I think it looks like it used to natively go there. I'm going to switch to the smaller iron and see if I can get it on there. All right, I think it's on there. All right, so now we need to work on this problem. All right, where's my spot?
All right, I think that that, that's gonna be tough. You gotta find the matching wire underneath. This is the wire that needs to just go down there. And there's the other end of it. So that's going to need to attach there. But then in order to get the full inductance, we're going to need to attach down in there. That's the tricky part. Let's try to get closer. So there it is there. All right, I think we can make it. So we'll try with the mini hot tweezer first. Right at the right angle. Try to stick this guy where he belongs. That connection we can make a little bit better. But I think that we got it. Yep, I can see the, it might be hard to appreciate under the microscope, but I can see the companion wire under there moving when I probe that. So that got that. And I think we can make a good connection here with the bigger iron. Now I would like to fly a drone around the uh, parking lot here to test, take some pictures, but he didn't send me anything but the board, damn it. So I think we're going to, I think this one is electrically solid after we come back through and add epoxy on the parts that needed epoxy. There we go. And let's check. All right. So now if that, if that worked, we can test that um, and we'll be able to confirm that we actually have a unbroken wire that's going from here around and around and around and around and soldering down there. Let me check the other side and see if there's any breaks that we missed. Not sure where that goes. All right, so if it beeps, then that means we have, um, we've done it. If not, we'll have to pull it off and continue to investigate. All right, so let's head over to the multimeter, set it for continuity testing, and see if we have an unbroken line. All right, so we should have an unbroken line from one pad through the other and we do yay all right so that tells us that our connections are good and therefore everything should work so let's look around the board for any other sign of damage or just for the record in case somebody else is doing a similar repair and they would like to see what this board looks like close up so they can hit pause we'll come back through here put some epoxy down there to strengthen that put some epoxy on the broken part of that coil Recheck it for continuity, and that'll be it. These are tough little boards. All right, so that's it. That really didn't take very long, and I think that it'll make this guy really happy to get his board back working and there's no reason why you can't fix stuff even if it's super tiny like a coil itself. I just fixed a coil. I can't believe it. I fixed a coil. Ah.